Hello everybody out there in the bookverse, it's Stephanie and today I am back to play another round of TBR mini star hop in 48 hours. Hopefully, I mean, we never know what's gonna happen, right? I have been successful the past two times that I have tried to play this game in 48 hours. I have accomplished it. So I am hoping that I will be able to accomplish it this time as well, but we never know. If I hit some uh, black holes, that could definitely change how I, how much I am able to do. Uh, but I'm really, really excited for this round. I have been doing a lot of schoolwork lately. I am in grad school. And let me tell you, there are a lot of drugs out there. There are so many medications to memorize and my brain is full. I need this weekend to just read and enjoy some time with my Patreons because we are going to be playing this together. The top tier of my Patreons plays this game with me whenever I decide to do a 48 hour um, TBR mini readathon. We do one at least every two months. It's just gonna be a good time. I need this in my life. So uh, I have books that are on my TBR already from when I played regular TBR Star Hop. I only have four books on there from that, but I haven't read any of those books yet. So they are definitely options on here. Plus I have some other commitments that I need to read this month as well. And I do have quite a few shorter books that are options that I need to get through this month anyways. So it'd be really nice to be able to fit some of those on there. I feel like I have a lot of shorter options options. So hopefully they'll be able to fit into the prompts that I get. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it's nice to me. It's been kind of nice the last few times. And when I played the race with my niece, it was also fairly nice to me. So I feel like we are, we're due for it to be a little bit harsher. We'll see if it's this round. But yeah, I am going to be streaming live with my Patreons during most of this readathon and especially during this first roll. Uh, we're going to be doing reading sprints and stuff. So I'm really excited to jump in to roll number one, see what I get. Fingers crossed, we start off with a big number. And yeah, let's see where we go with it. Okay, here we are for roll number one. Really anything but a six, I'm gonna be okay with. Um, even at this point, if we got a six on the first one, I wouldn't be too terribly mad just because it would send us back to the beginning, but we would only like, lose one book. It only be one extra book. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually be okay with anything at this point. So let's go ahead and jump into roll number one. Whew, here we go. A two, of course. Moving along slowly, we land on a moon, and let's go check out what prompt we get. Okay. okay, so for the first roll, we didn't really move too far. We got a two, we got a moon prompt, but you know what? It's fine, I, I'm kind of in the mood to just go with whatever I get at this point for this readathon. I'm just really excited to be reading again. So I'm gonna screen record this, so let us go ahead and spin for our first moon prompt. I'm really excited. Let's see what we get. Nice, library. Okay, our first prompt is a library book. I'm really excited about that. I actually have a really good library system and so I do tend to be able to get a lot of books from my library, um, especially from like Libby. Hi. Oh, that was loud. So I can like borrow books, like eBooks or audiobooks from Libby and those can count. And I did actually just go to the library. Well, it was a couple weeks ago at this point, but I got, um, some books from there so I can pick from those as well. So I actually have a lot of options and I'll bring some to you. Okay, so I am back with some options. Like I said, I actually have several options for this, which I am pretty excited about and a little bit surprised because I don't tend to go to the library all that often. So this was lucky. Uh, my first option is Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe, Smith. Um, this used to be, well, still is. This is a Webtoons comic. And then it was picked up by Del Rey, I think is the publisher. I don't know, I can't, can't see it because it has the library sticker on it, but it was traditionally published. And I really like, I mean, the color schemes are beautiful and I really just like how this story is done. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling and it is a pick for um, the Magical Readathon 
if I read this one, it will fulfill a prompt for stealing from someone else's TBR because G also put this on her TBR uh, because it is her Patreon buddy read. So that is an option. White Sand by Brandon Sanderson. This is a graphic novel. I actually have all three books in this graphic novel series, so it might not be a bad idea to just jump into it so that I can um, kind of get going within the series because this is uh, some of the reads for the Cosmere Unbounded read along. This also would be a reread for me. I have a couple of reread options on here. And then I also have the audiobooks checked out from my library for Arcanum Unbounded. And we have two short stories that we need to read for the Cosmere Unbounded read along this month. One is The Sixth of the Dusk and the other is Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell. And they are both within Arcanum Unbounded so I could use the library audiobook for that. Uh, they're both pretty short I believe. They are like two or three hours something like that on audiobook so it shouldn't be too hard to get through them. And I feel like I feel like I'm probably not going to do Lore Olympus at this point because it fits other prompts that I might want to use it for instead that none of these fit. So I think it might be safe to save that one for a little bit. And also I think I'm I think I'm between Six of the Dusk and White Sands. I really want to read both and I need to read both this month, but I feel like I'm going to go with White Sands. I have two other volumes within the series that I need to read anyways, and so it'll be good to have this as my first one. Plus, I'm kind of feeling a graphic novel at this point. I'm quite a bit more awake, and so I think it'll be nice to just like have something that I have to physically read without audiobooking it. Um, I do like having the audiobook option when I'm getting a little more tired because it helps me focus, uh, but I'm awake right now. So I think we're going to go with this one. I don't love the art style, honestly, of these graphic novels, and I'm not a huge fan of the dialogue either, but I do want to reread them because we're doing it for Cosmere Unbounded, uh, and I'm thinking it'll be a pretty quick read because it is a reread. So first choice is going to be White Sands, and I am really excited to see what my Patreons choose for their picks as well. So I will probably just update you once I finish it because it won't take me that long, hopefully. Okay, so I finished White Sands Volume 1. It did not take me that long. It's been less than two hours, I think, since I started. Maybe, yeah, it's been less than two hours since I started and I've already finished this, which is nice because I only moved two places and so I needed something rather quick. Um, I really do not think that this is Brandon, Sa is Brandon Sanderson's best work. I don't love it. I think the dialogue is not that well done. And I just, I find it to be extra angsty. And also I don't like the art style as well. I just feel like I would have liked this a lot more if it was done in a novel format. I just think that's Brandon Sanderson's best way of doing things. He writes amazing novels and I am not in love with this one. It is interesting to learn things in here that might connect to the Cosmere as a whole, but overall I don't find that this one is as interconnected. I might just be missing it. In all honesty, I know there is a little bit of connection that you find in another one that I have read recently, which I'm not going to say. Um, but overall, this is fun, easy to get through, but it's not the most compelling thing. And I don't absolutely love it like I do everything else in the Cosmere. I also feel like I probably judge this a little differently because I know it's by Brandon Sanderson and I know I love Brandon Sanderson, but this isn't at Brandon Sanderson level for me. So as a graphic novel, I it's fun and it's interesting, but I just don't like the dialogue or the art style or the angst. The story is fairly good. I just am not quite as invested because of my dislike of the other aspects of it. Overall though, it was fun. Like, and obviously it was a really easy fast read and I wanted to reread it while I'm rereading everything in the Cosmere or reading for the first time everything in the Cosmere. I am really excited that it was done quickly and let's go ahead and jump into the next roll. Okay, here we go with roll number two. We don't want a four, so anything but a four I'm gonna be okay with, but ooh. I would like a bigger number, let's be honest. I don't want to crawl through this game with twos. So anything but a four, but I would take something bigger. And it's a one. Seriously. Well, 
onto the star and I guess let's go see what prompt we get. Okay, uh, so um, we got one space, which we're crawling along. We get a two, then we get a one. I don't know if we're gonna finish, even if we don't hit any wormholes, but let's go ahead and see what our next prompt is. I'm gonna start screen recording, and then we will spin for the star prompt. I'm really hoping that it's nice. Um, star prompts tend to be easier to fulfill, so let's see what we get. Okay, a book in a series. I feel like that is fairly broad. So any book within a series, um, it can be first, middle, last, whatever. I am going to go get some options and I'll be back. Okay, so like I said, for this one, I actually have a lot of options because I read a lot of series. I read fantasy and fantasy tends to come in series. So of the options, of course, I have White Sands Volume 2. So this is the sequel to the book that I just read, which obviously it's in a series. I have Monstrous Volume 5, which is the fifth volume within the Monstrous series, adult high fantasy graphic novel series. I absolutely love this series. It's so good. Oh, it's amazing. Check it out if you like graphic novels. And if you like complex world building within fantasy, this definitely has that. And the art style is just gorgeous. Um, I also, again, have Lore Olympus, first book in a series, so this would also fit as well. And I have Zodiac Academy, the first book within that series. This is my Patreon buddy read for this month, which I am really, really excited to get to. I've been saving it for this weekend intentionally, hoping to be able to fit it in. This is a new adult fae romance. I've heard the first book in the series is not as good, but it gets better. So. I'm anticipating it'll be a quick read either way though. And also in a series we have Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. I have been meaning to read this book forever. It's a reread for me. It shouldn't be too long. I started it not a while, not too long ago, but didn't get too far. I might need to restart it just because I have had so much going on since then. I'm like, my memory is lacking. Um, but since it is a reread, I might not need to restart in all honesty i should be okay uh, but this one is also pretty thick so my thought process on how to pick which book i'm going to read oh this is so hard i'm so torn but i i think i'm gonna save this one in case the prompt for a book over 500 pages comes up because i think this is one of the only books over 500 pages that i think i can realistically finish within this time frame i mean i could find another one but this one is one that i need to read this month and I think I could actually fit it in because it's not that much over 500 and it's a reread so it should be rather quick. It's about 560 um, and it's a reread so that should help me move through it more quickly. So that one I think I'm gonna save just in case that prompt comes up. And this one too, I know it's terrible. Like this is probably the one that I would pick because it is the one I'm the most excited about I think just because it's a buddy read with my patrons. I'm so excited to be able to chat with them about it. Uh, people on the chat, my patrons in the chat are talking about it and their feelings about it. And so I'm really having some FOMO, but I think I'm gonna have to hold off on this one in case the prompt for a book over 400 pages comes up because again, I need some books for those. I need books that will fulfill those prompts. So I think I'm gonna save this one as well. I definitely wanna fit it in somewhere. So if later on another prompt comes up that it fits and we're farther along and I feel a little more comfortable than three spots, I might fit that one in. Um, I think I'm going to save Laura Olympus as well, just because I feel like this is going to be a really quick, easy read. It's different. If I get like a romance, I can fit it in there or something like, I, I don't know. I just feel like this one is unique and different. So I want to save it for prompts that it might fulfill like that. So we're kind of between monstrous volume five and White Sands volume two. So in all reality, this one is actually on my TBR star hop for the month. So I should read this one, but I just read the first one in this one. So I'm already like into this world, into the lingo, the art style that I don't really like. I think I'm going to go with White Sands. 
I think it just makes sense. I just finished the first one. This will just be a nice, easy flow, and I, I'm going with this one. I think this is probably the best choice. Also, I think I remember that there was a weird art change in the middle of this, but we shall see. Okay, so finished White Sands Volume 2. I am now two books down in my TBR mini readathon. And this one was pretty good. I feel like we're getting into like the politics behind the more obvious politics and we're getting some backstory on people and a little more intrigue going on. There is this really weird art style change. So like here's the art style regularly. And then towards the end of the book, it like completely changes to a different art style. So I think they probably switched artists partway through. I'm not really sure why, uh, but it was kind of abrupt and weird. I noticed it the first time I read it and yeah, it's not my favorite, but honestly, I don't really like either of the art styles. So, oh well. I feel like this book reminds me a little bit of Elantris in the way that there is this one country that is very fanatically religious and opposes these other people. And you have the really, and they're like trying to like kill people. They're quite violent. Um, and so I feel like there's definitely similarities in that aspect when I'm reading it. But I do really just kind of enjoy reading it. It's one of those I'm like, this isn't the best, but it's kind of fun, you know? Like, it's entertaining, it's quick. I mean, how long did that take me? It took me about an hour to read this entire volume. So it's a very quick read. Yeah, I am now two books down. Both of them were graphic novels, though. So that's really not that terribly impressive, I guess. But let's go ahead and we are going to do roll number three. It is now 1030. I started at seven and it's just a little bit before 1030. So we're going to do the third roll. All of my Patreons have gone to bed because they are on different time zones. Um, but yeah, let's jump into this next roll and fingers crossed we get a big number. We need to get moving so I can feel confident putting like actual solid books <laughs> onto this and actually reading something thicker than a graphic novel. <laughs> okay, roll number three. We do not want a three because we don't want to have to go back, but in all reality, I just, I just would really like a number four, five, or six. It's like a 50-50 chance. I don't feel like I'm asking for too much. Just no t one, twos, or threes. Like, that's not, that's not too much to ask, I feel. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm super excited about that. And another star. We are past the first wormhole. Very excited about that. Okay, let's go and see what star prompt I get. Okay, so we have another star. So we're going to do another star spinner wheel prompt. It's still... <laughs> It's still open to star prompts, so we'll just go ahead and spin it from there. I am feeling pretty good about this. I feel like getting past that first wormhole has put me into a little bit of a better feeling about how this is going to go. I feel like I might be able to put a little bit more solid books on there. Um, I'm still not opposed to use, to putting on the graphic novels. They're like, I have a lot of them that I need to read this month. I actually have a lot of short stories and graphic novels, so I'm going to have to fit those on and into this month sometime. But I feel like maybe if I find a book that fits this prompt really well, then I'll go ahead and go with that. So, okay, here we go. Audiobook. Okay, I can do that. I do listen to a lot of audiobooks. Okay, so for audiobook, I don't think that should be actually too terribly hard to find a book that fits that. I do tend to read a lot of books immersion reading, so I will read the audiobook as well as reading it physically. So I kind of do both of them combined. This is something I do quite frequently. Uh, so that's not going to be too difficult for me to do to find an audiobook. Um, I am going to look into my options and I'll get back to you guys with what I, what some of my choices can be. Okay, so I have come back with a few options for audiobooks for you guys. The first one is just very irresponsible of me to go off of my TBR that I actually need to read for the month, but 
It's Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I've just kind of been craving reading this book for some reason, and I saw that this audiobook was on Scribd, and so I just, I don't know, I just really want to read it, but in all reality, I probably shouldn't because I have so many books on my TBR that I need to read, plus I have a really busy month, like I can't really afford to read books that I don't need to read, but I really want to read that one. Um, also, the audiobook for this one is on Audible, so I could read Zodiac Academy. Um, I also could read Master of Sorrows because the audiobook for this is actually included in an Audible membership. In case anyone was interested in checking out the audiobook for this book, I really love this book. This is a reread for me, so I can vouch that I absolutely enjoy this book and would highly recommend it but if you have I think it's an audible membership of some kind I don't I don't know if it's any special one but it was included in mine and also I have the audiobook for the two short stories that I need to read within the Arcanum Unbounded so those are options as well ah <sighs> now I have to make this decision I know I'm past the first wormhole I'm feeling a lot more confident but again I feel like I should save this one. It's the only one over 500 pages that I feel like I could recently get through in this readathon. Obviously, if I had to pick another one, I could. It is what it is. But I just feel like with one wormhole still in the picture, it doesn't seem like the best idea to pick a 500 plus page book. So I'm going to wait on that one. Oh, and I'm not gonna pick Gallant. I want to so bad, like I'm just feeling this one and if I was mood reading, I definitely would be picking this one. But I just can't justify putting a book on here when I have so many that are on my TBR and for buddy reads and read-alongs that I have committed to that putting like one that's not on my commitment, I just can't do it quite yet at this point, unless I've gotten through a lot more books in this weekend. Um, ugh, so we're between these ones and I'm going to be honest, I want to pick this book so much, but the fact that it is an audio prompt, I am quite hesitant because I do find that a lot of times I don't enjoy audiobooks for kind of angsty YA type books. And I know that this is not YA, this is new adult, but from what I have read of it and what I've heard, it has that same feel to it, that same kind of angsty young feel to it. And I find that I don't enjoy the audiobooks as often for those types of books. Like they're kind of hit or miss for me. And I really want to give this book the best chance that it can have. And so while I think I can probably do audio. I don't want to commit to that when there's a chance that I would want to stop listening to the audio if I'm not enjoying it and just read it physically. And if it is chosen for an audiobook prompt, I don't have that option. So as much as this is probably my top choice, I am going to have to say no, just because I want to give it as much of a chance as I can to enjoy it. So we are down to more Brandon Sanderson. I just realized that every single book chosen so far for this readathon has been Brandon Sanderson. I didn't even do that intentionally, but I kind of like it. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, so I'm probably just going to read the first book in here. I don't think it really matters which of the short stories I do. I think they're fairly similar. So why don't we just do Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell? And that is going to be my choice for the third role. I am really excited to try this one out. I've heard great things about it and I have really enjoyed some of his shorter works before. So I, th I think this is a good choice and it is a practical choice, which I'm also proud of. <laughs> okay, so I have finished another book. Well, short story, but it counts for this readathon. Um, I finished Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was excellently done, very intriguing characters. The setting was super interesting and atmospheric. I really enjoyed it. So I did read the like prologue to it, the part that kind of explains the world within the Cosmere. And I'm pretty sure this is the only story that is set within this world. What is it, Threnody? I think is what it is. The Threnodite system and the place is 
called Threnody. Yeah. Um, and this is the only one that's set within that world at this point, as far as I am aware. If there are other Cosmere people out there that uh, can tell me I'm wrong, that's fine too. <laughs> but it's a very interesting world and you get some in background information on the world in that prologue part and then in the epilogue Brandon Sanderson kind of tells us, how, well, it's not really an epilogue, it's a postscript, I guess. But Brandon Sanderson tells us how George R.R. R. R. Martin just kind of asked him, hey, do you write short stories? I'm doing this anthology on dangerous women. And so he wanted Brandon Sanderson to write a story for that anthology, which I think sounds really interesting. I'm kind of now interested in reading some of the other stories within that anthology because I really enjoyed this one. I liked the female characters in here. I like the nuance of them and how they are very strong, especially our main character. She is extremely resilient and strong and gonna do what needs to be done in order to take care of her family. But she also wants the family to like, not be as hard as her to feel happiness and joy and live normal lives, which I don't know if you can in this setting because it's kind of brutal, but it was really fun and interesting. It was uh, short, easy to get through, but I had a lot of fun reading this one. I'm glad I did. I don't know what the connections are going to be to the rest of the Cosmere, but I think they're definitely going to be there. It seems like it might be an important world. Maybe, I kind of hope so, because it has a lot of interesting stuff going on. But it is now, I did like take a little bit of a break and have some like food snack and it's now one o'clock in the morning and I am going to do another roll. This is probably almost 100% yes going to be my last roll of the evening, but let's jump into roll number four. Okay, here we are in roll number four. So we do not want a four this time. Uh, fingers crossed, we don't get a four. I don't want to have to go backwards, but anything besides a four, I'm gonna be good with. Oh, what if we got a six? That would be crazy cool. But let's see, two, okay, that's fine. That's lovely. I mean, really, did we expect anything else? I feel like this is the point where the game does this to me, but it's it's okay, we don't have to go backwards. Uh, we did land on a sun though, and the sun prompts can sometimes be difficult. So let's see, ooh, what prompt I get. Okay, so we landed on a sun prompt, which I'm not super mad about, but I'm a little nervous because Big Book is on here, which is over 500 pages, and that could just be kind of exhausting right now, but we'll see how this goes. Whew. Here we go. Let's see what our prompt is. <gasps> no. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, we were like that close. Guys, we were so close. Oh, okay. I, I guess it is what it is. Uh, I guess we're going to be reading a book over 500 pages. So let's go see what options I have. I think our options are fairly limited at this point. But um, yeah, let, let us go see. Oh. Okay, so uh, my options for this are much slimmer. But that's okay. <laughs> um, I don't I don't have as many books that I want to read that are over 500 pages. Uh, well, as many books that I can fit in. I have a ton of books I wanna read that are over 500 pages. I just can't fit them all in at this point. Um, so here are my options. First, we have Valor by John Gwynn. This is the second book in his Faithful in the Fallen, adult high fantasy, Norse inspired. Very, very good. Um, I have already started it. It was on my TBR for last month, for the month of March, and I needed to have started it um, in order to win the game for March, but I haven't finished it yet, and we are midway through April, uh, but I'm like that, so I don't know, that's a ton, but it is definitely over 500 pages. Let me see how many pages do we got in this book. It is... Mm, uh, s about 650 pages. So this is a chunky one, even though I've already started it. Um, I also have The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. This one is another adult high fantasy, second book in the series as well. This, <coughs> ooh, I'm okay. This is the second book in his Dandelion Dynasty, which I am doing a read along for. And I have already made a good chunk of progress in this one as well. Um, definitely over... 
500 pages. Let me see, 852 pages of this one. So, <laughs> and the other option that I have is Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. This one is, I think this book is actually on, yes, this book is actually on my TBR Star Hop for the month of April, which means I need to read it in order to win April. And I did start it as well. So I'm a little bit into here. Um, I might need to like skim and review what I read because it was several months ago, but it is about 550, 560-ish pages long. You know, I need to read all of these. Like they're all books that I need to read this month, but I think think I'm going to go with Master of Sorrows, which I don't think is going to surprise any of you guys because every time I've mentioned Master of Sorrows so far this vlog, I have said that I am saving it for my book over 500 pages. Now, if I get another book over 500 pages, I have some options, but unless we hit a wormhole, that's not going to happen because I don't have any more stars before the end. So this is it. Master of Sorrows. I'm just barely over 100 pages in, so I have about 450 pages left to read but I think in order to like make it fair for the game it needs to be a book over 500 pages so I'm gonna go back to the point where I'm reading over 500 pages in the book. I think that's fair um, so I will be rereading part of it uh, but not all of it. So that's the way I'm doing it. My game, my rules. Uh, it's one in the morning, so I don't know how much of it I'm going to get done tonight, but I will start tonight, and hopefully I can get a good chunk of this done before, like, too much time has passed tomorrow because this is such a long book and I don't know what's going to happen. If we hit the wormhole, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But if we miss the wormhole, I think we should be fine. I think I can even fit another full book on here, so... Wish me luck. <laughs> okay, so it is now about two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, and I stayed up pretty late last night reading, so I am tired, if you can't see it, like my eyes are exhausted. So I read <laughs> late last night and today, but I finished Master of Sorrows. So I've now finished my over 500 page book. <sighs> It feels really good to have this out of the way and it feels nice knowing that there are no more stars as long as I don't hit the wormhole. So this was a reread for me and I enjoyed it. I really loved this the first time around and I feel like I picked up on more things the second time around, which is great because I am really excited to jump into the next book in this series. I did audiobook and physical read quite a bit of this and it was a little bit frustrating in all reality because this book has a lot of differences between the physical book and the audiobook so it made it a little bit difficult to kind of stick with it because I would get lost on kind of where we were on the page. It really just had a an excessive amount of differences. I don't understand why so many things were changed. It was almost like it was a completely different edit of the book. So that was quite frustrating. Um, and I think it actually detracted a little bit from my enjoyment just because I had to keep trying to figure out where we had jumped to and when it picked back up to be to being like the same as it was in the audiobook, but I really love this story. I think it's great. It's so much fun. It's very engaging, and I'm excited to see what happens later. I really love books that have a lot of like lore and um, like the gods and that type of stuff involved in the world. So yeah, I'm excited to keep going with it, but I'm also excited to see what we get in our next role. I, so we don't want a two. I will be happy with anything but a two. I just really don't want to go backwards. Uh, I am fine with more books. I just don't really want to have to jump backwards. And I really don't want the wormhole to be able to choose which book that I read. I need the free choice in it because I need to be able to put whatever book I want on there. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the next roll. Okay, I am really nervous for this roll. This, her last wormhole right here, and I just really don't wanna hit it. I'm nervous that if we do, and then I spin the wheel and I get like Valor or something, that there is no way I'm gonna be able to finish this readathon in time. But fingers crossed we don't get a two. Anything but a two, and we're good. 
Come on, you've got this. Three! Ooh, oh my gosh, I am so excited. <laughs> Yay! Oh, we are past the final wormhole. We still have at least two more books to read, um, but we've done it. We're not going backwards. There is a good chance we're gonna finish this and we have a moon prompt. So let's go see what we get. Okay, we are going to do a moon prompt. I am very optimistic about this. I feel like I'm in a, I'm feeling good about it now that we are past the last wormhole. Uh, so I feel like it's gonna be good no matter what. I mean, the most we can get is four more books and I will pretty much get to choose them. I mean, there is some say that the spinner wheel has, but I feel pretty good about this. So let's go ahead and spin and see what we get. I'm really kind of hoping that it gives me a free pick. I think that'd be fun. Okay. So uh, the prompt that we got is hardcover. So I'm going to go and pick out some options of books that I can read for this and I'll be back. Okay, so I have come back with options. I have a few options and actually some short ones, which is really nice and great to fit on here. Um, my first option I have is Laura Olympus. Uh, I've had this on my options quite a few times during this readathon, so I don't need to explain that to you. Um, I also have The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. This is, I think it's a gothic thriller. I'm not 100% positive, but this is the Top Shelf Society book club pick for the month of April, so I do need to read this one. Um, I also have White Sand Volume 3, which is the hardcover version of this graphic novel, and I have the other short story within this collection that I need to read as well. So I do have quite a few options of things that I need to read. I feel like I'm not really feeling a graphic novel right now, so I'm going to remove those from the options. So we're sitting between this as our different choices for it. And this isn't really that long. I think it's um, it's just under 400 pages, so it shouldn't be too bad of a read. And I did chat with my Patreons, and I think we're going to be going with the short story in here. I want to read this one so that I can um, finish it within this sprint that I'm doing with my Patreons, and then we can go ahead and do the next roll before we end this live show. We do do a couple live shows a day. It's gonna be, it's the majority of the day that we're hanging out together and doing sprints. So I'm going to read the short story in here. It's sixth of the desk. I don't know anything about it. I don't really know what system it is placed within or if any other books were within that system. But yeah, that is gonna be our choice for this roll, and I'm excited. Okay, so I finished it. It was super short, took me less than an hour to read. I think it was just um, around 60 pages of this book. This is set in a world that does not have any other Cosmere uh, books written within it, and apparently it's written very far in the future within the Cosmere, so that's kind of interesting. I don't really know exactly what <laughs> to think of this world it's very different and interesting but I didn't get as much into it just because it feels like there's a lot going on here and we didn't have a lot of time to really learn about it which is understandable it's a short story but I really would like to learn more about what's going on here I feel like it's almost like a teaser story to get us intrigued and want to learn more but this one definitely has other Cosmere connections. I mean, it's very blatantly connected to the rest of the Cosmere. So very interested in what comes out of the things that we have learned within Six of the Desk. It has a lot of opening for other things to come in it and for more books to be written within this world. So very interested in figuring that out, but let's go ahead and jump into the next role and we'll see what we get. This could potentially be the last roll of the game. That's crazy. Okay, so potentially our last roll. We just, um, three or above means we're done. But really, I kind of hope we get a smaller number. I would like to do a couple more books in this readathon because I feel like it has gone so quickly and I want it to last a little longer. But let's go ahead and we'll see what we get. A three. Okay, well, we're done. We hit the last spot and I will let you guys know what I pick. That's crazy. Definitely gonna be successful in this round. I mean, one more book. There's there's no way I can mess it up at this point. 
Okay, so we have finished the game. That's insane. We are still less than 24 hours in, but I mean, I did pick a lot of shorter books for this, which in all reality, I had a lot of shorter books on my TBR. So it wasn't like I was intentionally adding shorter books on here just to get through it quickly. Like I did have a lot of shorter books on my TBR for this month. So that's probably a lot of the reason to do with that. I'm thinking I'm going to try to play again, but maybe add like have it be two dice that I'm rolling instead of one. So I at least have two more books to read, see if I can get through it twice the second time with two dice instead of one. We'll see because I have run out of a lot of my shorter books that I was going to read. But for this last one, it is a free pick. I get to pick whichever book I want to read. And I don't think this is gonna come as a surprise to anyone, but I am going to be reading Zodiac Academy, The Awakening. So the first book in the Zodiac Academy series by Caroline, Caroline? Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. Like I said, this is a new adult fantasy fae romance. I have heard people get very addicted and emotionally invested in this series, but my patrons said the first book is not that wonderful. So the first book is okay, but then they continually get better throughout the series. So I'm hoping that that is the case, but also kind of hoping that this one is at least entertaining and I get invested enough that I just keep going with it. So that's what I'm hoping for this one. But um, we have ended our sprints, our live stream, and we're gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna get some food and they're gonna get food, whatever they decide to do. And then we'll jump back on a little bit later. So I'm going to see how far I can get into this. And I'm definitely gonna finish. So definitely going to win TBR Star Hop for the 48 hour readathon, but probably going to have another go at it with probably two dice, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm going to let you guys know how it goes once I get into this enough to have thoughts. Okay. I have now finished Zodiac Academy, which means that I have officially won TBR mini star hop for this 48 hour readathon. I am really excited about that. But after chatting with my Patreons, I found that we kind of wanted to continue this weekend and finish it out. So I am gonna see if I can play two rounds in the time, but the second round I get to use two dice. So I could finish in two books or it could take me a ton. You never know, right? With this game, I could have to go back to the beginning. So that's what we're gonna do. But Zodiac Academy officially made this game a win for me. And I have very mixed feelings about this book. There are some things in this that I absolutely love. Some tropes like the magical school setting and the trial that you have to go to to like prove yourself, like developing these magical powers. I like some of the different like orders within this and the world is fairly interesting. I like that it's given to us fairly simply, which is a nice break from some of the high fantasy that has really complicated worlds, lots of wording that you have to remember and those types of things. This one is very easily digestible. I wasn't a huge fan of the type of bullying that was in this book, it felt fairly like immature and degrading, humiliating bullying and that type of stuff is just not really my style. I'm interested to see where we go because I hear this is a romance and I'm not feeling romance. Like I feel like these girls are constantly saying how hot the guys are, these guys that are literally torturing them. So I don't know, it's, it's very strange to me, but I am gonna continue on with it. One of my Patreons has already read the first four and she says it gets a lot better and that the kind of bullying aspect goes away a bit, like it's still kind of there, but it's not as prominent as it is in this first book, which I think I'll enjoy a lot more when we can really focus on like the world building and the story and that type of stuff. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but now I guess we are starting over and we'll see how this goes and we'll jump into roll number one of round number two. <laughs> okay, so moving back to the beginning um, and I have my two dice so I could get lucky and move forward quickly or I could be very unlucky and not go anywhere. So we'll see how the game treats me. And here we go. First roll, I get a 10. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. And we get a star. Ah, I moved along very quickly and now I'm, ooh, and I can't 
hit the wormhole because I can't get a one. So odds are we're gonna have two books on this one, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay, so our first roll, we got a 10. So we are not gonna hit a wormhole for sure. We're probably gonna get there in two rolls, but you know what, that's okay because this is the second round and uh, it's currently almost 11 o'clock at night on Saturday. So I have about 20 hours left and I am gonna sleep some of that time. So I am not necessarily opposed to only having two books on the second round. Um, but let's go ahead and see what prompt I get. We got a star, right? Yes, we are on a star. So let's go ahead and spin and see what we get. I don't know. I don't know if I have a preference on which prompt I want in all honesty. So let's just see what it gives us. Audiobook. Okay, I can do that. Audiobook it is. Okay, so I am going to grab some options for audiobook and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back with some options and I think all of them have probably already been on the, been on the list except maybe one. Um, I could finish Wall of Storms. I, like I said, I'm about 300 pages in and it's what, 900, 850 pages long. So this would be a huge commitment and I do have at least one book left still. So this is a hesitant pick and that goes for Valor as well. I am a little bit into it, uh, but it still would be a huge commitment to be able to finish this within this readathon. Then I also have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Like I said, I, I've kind of been feeling this book. I don't know why. I really want to read it, but I feel like that's almost like irresponsible of me. Like I said, I have so many books I need to read. Um, again, I have The Death of Jane Lawrence. This is another one that I do need to read for a commitment that I have this month. It's also part of my Aurelium TBR. Um, and it also looks really good. And I also have really been wanting to jump back into the Lord of the Rings world. I read The Fellowship of the Ring last month and Abby and I are going to continue buddy reading the rest of this series and we didn't really decide on when we want to read The Two Towers. It was kind of loosely on both of our TBRs for April with the understanding that it just might not happen. So that's also another one that I would love to get to. I know this is the Fellowship of the Ring, but I'm on the Two Towers. And I would love to, again, immersion read this like I did this one because Andy Circus narrates these and he is amazing. So good. Oh, I absolutely love his audiobook narration. Ooh, it's so hard because I feel like I want to mood read, but I also want to use this opportunity to read books that are on my TBR that I need to read because this is probably the weekend where I'm going to do pretty much all of my reading for almost the entire month. So I feel like I have to remove this one from it, even though it just sounds so good. And ooh, there's pictures in it. That's cool. Uh, maybe. Maybe if I have two more books on this TBR, I'll, I'll fit that one in. And I also feel like I kind of need to not put on Valor or the Wall of Storms just because I do have another choice after this. Um, so if you, this was the last one, that would be more realistic to put those on. So between the Two Towers and the Death of Jane Lawrence, if I was letting myself mood read, I would pick the Two Towers, but I feel like I have to be responsible and pick the one that's actually on my TBR and going to be something that I need to read for a commitment. So I think I'll go with the Death of Jane Lawrence. I'm gonna be a responsible person here and not mood read. And it does sound good. Like I am interested in this book. It's not that I'm not interested in it. I think it sounds really good and really interesting. Just for some reason, my mood's pulling me in other directions. But this one, I think I'm going to really enjoy. It has gothic vibes to it. I hear it has like surgery type things to it, which I also find kind of interesting. So we'll see what I think of this one. This is going to be my choice. And I probably am going to update you tomorrow because it's already 11 o'clock and I don't think I'm going to update you at like two in the morning. I doubt I'm gonna finish this tonight, so I'll probably just update you in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, it is now Sunday morning. It's about noon, and I have finished The Death of Jane Lawrence. I stayed up pretty late reading, and then I read the rest this morning, so it was 
I, I feel like I was expecting it to be super fast, but it is kind of almost 400 pages. I mean, like 370s, right? So it's a decently long book and I didn't feel like it was that fast of a read. I felt like it started off at a pretty decent pace and I was interested and then like the middle got pretty slow for me where I just was impatient to kind of get to where we were going. I have very mixed feelings about this and I don't really know how I feel about it quite yet. I feel like I need to sit on it for a little bit, think about it and decide how I feel because I didn't enjoy the pacing. I think the story itself was interesting and the premise and the ending and how things ended up, but just the way it was executed, parts of it didn't really ring with me. I wasn't a huge fan of some of the choices, but overall it was interesting. I did it, so that's something. So we can move on to our next role. I am going to start my next set of reading sprints with my Patreons, and then we will go ahead and jump into the second role of the second round, which looking at the board, Anything lower than a five, we will not get to the end, but bigger than a five, we will. So it's probably gonna happen that we are going to be done with it in one more roll, but we'll see. There's always a chance, right? I mean, I mean what month was it? Was it February when I ran, rolled like three twos or something like that? So it could happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we get for our next roll. It could very well, very well be our last. There's no way we're gonna hit the wormhole because with two dice, you can't roll a one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and roll, see what we get. Five or above, we're done. So odds are pretty good this is our last roll, but we'll, we'll see. A four, no way. I'm not really mad about it, but I think that's kind of funny that the odds were pretty low, but it happened anyway. So for it is moon, and we are not quite done with this game. Okay, so we got a moon prompt. We're not quite to the end yet, so we're going to spin for a moon prompt. I don't even know what I want, except for I don't really want a book over 400 pages. I think other than that, I'll be able to do fine, but over 500 pages... Ju or over 400 pages, I just don't think is gonna work for me right now. I'm too tired, I'm too tired for that. I'm kind of nervous. Please don't be a book over 400 pages. Please, please, please. Ooh. Spinning. I got library again. I feel like we're getting the same prompts. Like. We got audiobook twice, we got library twice. I feel like, okay, we're gonna change the timing of this spinner wheel so that we get something different because I feel like we just keep getting the same prompts over and over and I think it's because I'm like exiting out and coming back in. Yeah, I'm gonna spin again because I was just getting all the same things. Okay, so now we're gonna spin again and I changed like the duration of the spin. So hopefully that will make it so it doesn't keep landing on the same thing over and over again. Okay. Oh no. Oh, you've gotta be kidding. No. A book over 400 pages. A book over 400 pages, I jinxed myself. Can I go back and use the library prompt? Okay, I'll come back with options. Okay, I have brought options for books over 400 pages. Oh, why, why did this have to be the prompt? Um, but Wall of Storms, I would love for this to be the one that would fit. This one's like 850 pages, but I'm already 300 pages in. So even starting where I am, I will have over 400 pages still to read. So this one is one I would like to choose, Zodiac Academy 2. I have uh, been told by my Patreons I should pick this one. This one's like 470-ish pages, but the it is big, like the book is big. The writing isn't tiny, but I don't know. This just feels like it might take longer than I have. I also have Keeper of the Lost Cities Never Seen, which is the fourth, yeah, book four in this series, which it is a middle grade and it has like 
minimal writing on the page, right? It's so much less, but it's almost 700 pages long. So I feel like that's just a little bit of a stretch over 400. So I might should not do that. Um, I also grabbed Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This one is a YA fantasy and it is 403 pages. So this is just perfectly on the edge of being 400 pages. The writing is large and I, I don't know, I feel like this would probably be a quick read. Um, and then also I have Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. This is like a spinoff series to her Vampire Academy series, which I read in like high school, I think. And this one is 421 pages. So this one is also an option. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to take out Zodiac Academy just because I'm really worried I wouldn't be able to finish it within the amount of time. And I do kind of feel the same way about Keeper of the Lost Cities. I feel like it would be a really fast read, but it's 300 pages over the 400 max. So that just adds a lot on. And I don't think the fact that it's middle grade with like large writing would make up for those 300 pages enough necessarily because I still need to be able to read another book after this is what I'm keeping in mind. Like it's probably, it's a free pick. So I'm probably gonna just pick a graphic novel, but I still need to be able to read it. Like I need the time. I also just, I don't think I'm gonna read this right now. I'm like just not feeling that. So it's between these two and ugh, in all reality, I really want to choose this one because I need to read it. Like reading it would fulfill commitments that I have made. It would fulfill my TBR. Like this one's actually useful to me. So I would love to choose this one. I just, I still have over 500 pages left in it and I just don't think I can finish that within a five hour time frame, unfortunately. So I think I might have to go with Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber because I think this is actually the only one that I'll be able to finish with enough time left over to still be able to read another book. So it looks like this is the one we are going to go with. I did not see that coming this month. I had no intention of reading this one, but apparently uh, TBR Star Hop chose differently. So we are going to be reading Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. We're throwing in some YA that I wasn't expecting, but here we go. Okay, so I have finished Once Upon a Broken Heart. I just feel like Stephanie Garber's writing is not for me. I don't know why I decided that I was going to buy this book in the first place because I really dislike the Caraval series. I didn't like it at all. And I feel like I was kind of hoping that I would enjoy this because Jax was my favorite character and he is the main, one of the main characters in this book. But it wasn't like it, it felt so, so much like Caraval and it is set within the same world. So it's not really surprising, but this, it's just not for me, uh, but I did finish it and it's over 400 pages. So yay, that's completed. Oh, that was unfortunate to get that prompt. But I wanted to wait for my Patreon sprints, which are gonna start at five in order to do the final roll, even though, even though I know that the final roll I'm gonna get to the end because like there's no way not to at this point. But while I was waiting, I didn't really wanna fall asleep and I also wanted to get in as many books as I could for the Realmathon, like Peace Talks, read a 48 hour readathon as well. So I decided to read Lore Olympus. So I also read Lore Olympus while I was waiting for my Patreon print sprints to start. This is a reread for me. I really like this web tunes comic and I like reading it physical format so much more than I like reading it on my phone. I read it on my phone the first time around and it just wasn't, I don't like reading it in that format as much, but this way is so much more enjoyable for me. I think this is such a cute little romance, but it does kind of have a little bit of the darkness in it, like the Hades and Persephone, like it's not cute and sweet all the way. Like there are some kind of traumatic things that happen as well. But I love the art style and it's a super fast read. Like I read this so, so quickly and I am Team Bale, so fantasy romance that counts a little bit as well. So now we are going to be able to jump into the final roll. I know it's gonna be the final roll. There's no way to avoid that, which I'm fine with. And then I will let you know what book I pick. And this final roll is pretty much just a formality because there's no way that I'm not going to get to the end, but we'll do it anyways. Get a six, whoop, and we are going to be able to finish the game twice, even though the second time I did use two dice, still. It feels pretty good. 
Okay, so obviously we are on the final spot. It is a free pick and I need to pick a short book to read. Obviously I have two hours left, well a little bit less than two hours at this point, and so I'm gonna have to go with a graphic novel and I am between White Sands Volume 3 and Monstrous Volume 5. And I would like to read White Sands Volume 3 because then it would like finish out this series for me, which would be awesome. I would like have read the entire series in one readathon, but also I would like to have completed my April actual like big monthly TBR star hop and this is the last book that I have on that. I have read every other book for that monthly TBR during this weekend readathon. So I think I'm actually going to go with Monstrous. It'll just feel really good to have finished my monthly TBR so early because it is only the 10th of the month and I don't think I've ever finish my monthly TBR that early. Like it's just never happened and it would just feel so good. I would feel very accomplished and relieve a little bit of stress from my life, which I definitely, definitely need. So I think this is gonna be my choice. I'm going to go with Monstrous Volume 5. I have two hours, well, like an hour and 45 minutes at this point, sprinting with my patrons and yeah, this, this is the choice. Okay, that's, it, that's the end of this readathon. I completed the game twice. The second time I did cheat a little bit by using two dice, but I am fine with that because I read a lot this weekend. This is the most I have read in so long. I really needed this just to kind of relieve a little bit of the pressure that I felt because I've had a lot going on with school and in my life, just everything going on. I haven't been able to read as much as I would like. And I felt like commitments were kind of building up, but having it read so many books this weekend, I feel like I have a much more manageable amount of things to read for the remainder of the month. And then I'll be able to be caught up so I won't have to roll things over into next month like I have been having to do. So I think that'll just make me feel a lot better about where I am with my reading. But let's go through all the books that I read during this TBR or during this readathon, sorry, my brain is a little crazy right now because I haven't slept adequately. And this stack is heavy. I, this is crazy how heavy this stack is. And I'll try to remember all the prompts that go along with all of these books, but no promises. Okay, here's my, here's my stack for my 48 hour readathon. Ugh, sorry, okay, let's go through the books and what prompts they filled. So we had Zodiac Academy was a free pick at the end of my first round. Lore Olympus was just an extra one that I read. Um, Master of Sorrows was for a book over 500 pages. Then we had two within Arcanum Unbounded. We had Six of the Dusk, which was for an audiobook, I think. And then Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell, which was for a hardcover, I believe. Oh, I think. Then we had Once Upon a Broken Heart, which was for a book over 400 pages. The Death of Jane Lawrence, which was for an audiobook. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Um, Monstrous Volume 5, which was a free pick for the second round. And then White Sands Volumes 1 and 2, which were for a series. And gonna be honest, I don't remember what the other one was for. That's terrible, but y'all just watched it so you know what they were for. But that's an insane stack. It's very heavy. My arm hurts a tad bit right now, but I am really proud of myself for this weekend. Ah, it feels really good and it was so much fun. And I'm thinking the next time I play this, I would love to be able to do a readathon with all of you guys. So let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas uh, that I should potentially add into this readathon. I'm kind of just starting to plan now and thinking the end of June would be a good time. So that's my plan at this point. Let me know how your guys' reading has been going this month. This has been just a great weekend for me. The month itself would not be great, except this weekend was just so good. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I absolutely love doing these TBR mini readathons with you guys, and it's just, it's been a great weekend for me, guys. I loved it, but I now need to go um, do some things that I have been putting off because I've just been prioritizing reading. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.